Well, good morning. Welcome back. It is Friday, 2nd of July, 2021. And I'm looking at you from a new angle. My wife finally got a cell phone holder for her car. I'm not sure how well this is going to work for my purposes, but at least I don't have to chase my phone across the passenger seat every time I turn. So, bear with me while we test this new recording platform, if you will. So this weekend, we're going to celebrate the independence of the United States from the British Empire. July 4th, 1776. Independence was declared from the crown. Bunch of rugged individuals decided they wanted to roll the dice and start a new country based on life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Right? A little dangerous freedom. going on 240 years later, 241 years later, if I math that correct real quick, no, a little bit more than that, anyway, almost 250 years later. become such hot sopping P words that they will go cower at the boot of a tyrannical government. That they're crying for government not only to tell them how to live, but to tell you how to live. Because you need to adhere to their standards and their beliefs. as opposed to enjoying the individual liberties that were guaranteed by the Constitution of the United States. And by guaranteed, I mean reaffirmed. The Bill of Rights is an affirmation of God-given liberties. And here we are, all these years later, looking at a large portion of the population that would not only eagerly surrender their own, but yours. And if you're not willing to surrender your own, they want someone to come take them from you. How quickly we forget. So, when you go out to celebrate your 4th of July, remember that it's not about the barbecue, it's not about the fireworks. It's about that group of rugged individuals, and those men that penned that document, signed it delivered it to the King of England. They sent their death warrant to their executioner. Because if that revolution failed, they were guaranteed death.
kind of like Patrick Henry said, give me liberty or give me death. All these years later, hot sopping P words that would sit in the corner and cower and beg for an overreaching government to tell them how to live their lives but not only that that's not enough they need to tell you how to live They have their government in place to do it. You have the panderer in chief, the resident of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, that can't even quote Jefferson correctly on the simplest and most overused of Jeffersonian quotes. The tree of liberty must be refreshed from time to time with the blood of patriots and tyrants. He couldn't even spit that out correctly. But he could make sure to tell you that you, the American citizen, not the subject, the citizen, you don't need, you don't need your semi-automatic sporting rifles, also known as AR-15s. You're not gonna fight the government with those. The government has F-15s and nukes. Now, forget the fact that the guy that's posing as the president should know the F-15 has been decommissioned for a few years. Here, here or there. That's the second government official in that party to remind you and I, the American citizen, that they have nukes. They think that's some big threat. fighter planes and nuclear weapons. If that's how you think you're going to put your boot across the throat of the American people, that's what you think of your political opposition, you have no business holding the office you do. And that's why this country has fallen. And I want you all to remember that this Sunday you're celebrating your independence from the crown. When our ancestors went from being subjects to citizens, that your government views you as a subject. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Let me know how this little setup here worked out. I'll catch you in the next one. Be safe. Watch your six. Out for now.